good morning, everyone. I hope you got a good look at Nigel, because after my presentation, you'll never see him the same way again. <laughs> now, I'm here to explain to you this idea of programmable. And I think the best way to do that is to start with some very basic examples. But first, let me put this into context for you. He gave it to me upside down. Um, by 2020, 34 billion devices will be connected to the internet. So everyone will have something like four devices all around the world that are connected to the internet. It's kind of hard to imagine an internet of this scale. Now, many of us think of the internet as a monolithic thing. Some of you are probably thinking, the internet, those are those tubes that connect all of our computers around the world. But of course not, not today. What we really have is many different internets. Each of us experiences the internet in a different way. So, the AP decided we don't have to capitalize internet anymore. Capital letters are for proper nouns, places. We capitalize London, we capitalize Arkansas. We don't capitalize things like cow or car or bicycle because they're a generic thing. Everyone has a different kind of car or a different kind of bicycle. I believe each of us has a different internet. Now let's do a, a thought experiment here. Now this might be risky. I'd like all of you, just for a moment, to ponder this. Don't do this because it might be too personal. Consider taking out your laptop right now, opening up Amazon.com, and showing your personal homepage to the person sitting next to you. What exactly does Amazon know about you? Do you really want everyone else to know? We know. In this consumer, capitalistic world we live in, we are what we buy. And so, what Amazon thinks you are, who Amazon thinks you are, says a lot about you. So allow me to share with you what Amazon says about me. So, let's see. So first off, uh, some games. We've got a diplomacy. That might be a hint that I should be more diplomatic. Um, paths to glory. That sounds good. Great strategic rivalries, very competitive. Uh, some science fiction books, um, some devices, the blockchain revolution. And you'll notice that I very carefully scrolled this down so you couldn't see that all that row there is just princesses. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually true. I have a six and a half year old daughter, and so I, <laughs> I buy a good amount of princess related material on Amazon. But it's my show, I don't have to tell you that. Now, I'm not sure what your Amazon says about you, but I am pretty sure I know what Nigel's Amazon says about him. <laughs> now, a lesson to all of you, never leave your laptop open. <laughs> this is real. This is Nigel's Amazon.com. Now, I... <laughs> I'm not completely sure I know what a poo bag is. <laughs> but uh, poo bags direct, that's helpful. And then uh, we have pet hair remover. Now, I know for a fact that Nigel doesn't have a pet. So, <laughs> I started to think to myself, what exactly is Nigel, I, I stopped, I was like, I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know. Um, so, you know, this is a, a very different Amazon than mine, and so, if you were to show your neighbor what your Amazon says about you, I think you'd have to acknowledge that we live in a world that is truly personalized. My internet is different than yours. And of course, it's not just Amazon. All of our internets are different. And I think that's a, a powerful statement that we've come a long way in the past 20 years of, of the internet. But it's gonna go further than this. If you think about Amazon, this is one company who's telling us what we like and what we are like. So Amazon has all of this data about me, Amazon has all this data about you, but it's Amazon's algorithms that decide what we see. And I think that the internet has gotten so big and so complicated, it's not possible, and probably not a good idea, for any one company to decide how the internet appears to each of us. So a, 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 a good example of this is actually Amazon. So they released this device called the Amazon Echo, um, powered by Alexa. And the Alexa is really cool. I have one in my dining room, and you can say, you know, Alexa, what's the weather like? And she'll tell you. 
Uh, you can say, Alexa, tell me a joke. And Alexa will actually tell you a joke. They're not particularly funny jokes, but you know, it's early. Now, of course, because it's made by Amazon, you can say, Alexa, buy me some poo bags. And in just a couple of days, prime shipping, you'll get poo bags at your house. So that's pretty amazing. But what's really amazing and powerful about the Alexa is not the fact that you can buy things. What's powerful about the Alexa is that they made it programmable. Any company can add a skill to Alexa. Think of a skill as a verb or, or a, a phrase. So here are some examples. And by the way, Amazon better pay me those referral fees, affiliate fees for this. So many different companies have added skills. So, so skills you can program. So this is a very simple example here on the right. Um, but all of these companies are now hooked into Alexa. So if you think about this as a consumer, you can say, Alexa, get me an Uber. And in four or five minutes, an Uber will arrive at your front door. It's pretty amazing. You can say, Alexa, who's leading the masters? Alexa, what's the weather like at Roland Garros? Alexa, <laughs> am I fat? I love the Fitbit integration. So over a thousand different skills have been added to Alexa, and it's just starting. So as a user of Alexa, you don't know that this is a bunch of different companies. You know, all of these different companies have plugged in different skills. It just seems like an incredibly seamless experience. I have a personal assistant in my house that can call me a car or tell me to go work out. But it's a collaboration of all these companies. So instead of Amazon being a destination where I go to shop, now Amazon is a gateway. They're the gateway through which I can consume all of these other services and products. And I think that's a transformative way to think about the internet. It's no longer going to be a destination, a proper noun. It's going to be a pathway for us to go find and consume all of these different services. And it's so much richer and more robust than any one company can provide. Even Amazon, which seems to have everything, still thousands of companies, well, maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, will end up integrating into this platform so that through Alexa, I can see the entire world, at least the internet-connected world, uh, without having to rely on one company to personalize it for me. Now, let's think for a second about what this means for marketing and for marketers specifically. How do we operate in this complex world where no one knows exactly what's going to happen? With TV, it's pretty easy. TVs all have more or less the same size. Okay, some are high def, some are not. There's only a few channels. It's not that hard to figure out what's gonna happen. But now we have an internet that not only has all of these complex configurations, I have to know what the internet looks like for each one of you. But I also have to understand that no one company, no one person certainly, controls exactly what the internet is. And that's mind boggling. Not only do I have to give you personalized content, I have to customize it to exactly how you experience the world. So, what would a personalized internet look like? So what's the Amazon corollary here? So a personalized internet might be something like this. I, I did this backstage and I apologize because we started late because I was pulling this slide together. This is the New York Times today. Hillary Clinton apparently is going to be the Democratic nominee. And I have this nice big ad up here for a book called The Little Boy Who Lost His Name. Now, many of you probably heard of this book um, or this company which does personalized books. I thought it was particularly interesting that here I am giving a talk about personalization and they showed me a personalized book. It's a cool book, check it out. You can actually, it will make you a book with your child's name. Uh, and every page of the book gets changed based on the name of your child. But the most important part is, I bought this book for my daughter a couple of weeks ago. Now, I don't know why they're still showing me the ad. That's a different problem. Um, so I do know that this is personalized to me, the ads I'm seeing. And I think all of us experience this to some extent. It's not incredibly well personalized, but we're just at the beginning of a world where we can show a different internet marketing experience to different people. And some companies are further along the spectrum than others. Some companies have done a great job of this. Other companies just getting started. But when I say that programmatic is dead, that's probably 
a little bit of hyperbole, but it means that this isn't good enough. This idea, this idea of automation, of real-time automation, it's not gonna get us there. This is not a good enough experience for me as a consumer. I already bought the book. So thank you for acknowledging me and following me, and by the way, wasting your marketing dollars on me, right? Then again, maybe it was brilliant. Maybe they knew I was gonna come show all of you this ad. <laughs> and this was the best money they've ever spent ever on marketing. I'm selling them short. But this is, this is where we are today. Now, where do we have to go? We have to find a way to make marketing more intelligent. We have to find a way to bring all of the data we have about our consumers, about our prospects together. We have to use something smarter and something more powerful than simple human intuition to match the right creative with the right person at the right moment. And that's not going to happen using you know, the basic techniques from 50 years ago. We need to apply more. We need to be able to allow this collaborative ecosystem of companies that we're starting to see on the content side of the internet. And so this is what we talk about when we talk about programmable in the context of marketing. Later on, you'll hear from Matt Herman of Wayfair, who has been working on this for about nine months now, ever since we launched AppNexus Programmable Bidder here in London last year, we've had something like 30 different companies experimenting with these languages. I think Wayfair is one of the most advanced. What they're doing is they're writing programs. Theirs are much more complex than this, but we can actually use information about the user, about the location, about the time of day. 40 different characteristics can be used to write these algorithms that decide exactly what ad I will see. And this is programmable. This is Wayfair's intelligence driving the decision of the ad. It's not the website or the app. It's not Google. It's not AppNexus. We're not deciding what ads you see. It's actually based on your relationship with the marketer, your relationship and your experience and what you're doing. You know, maybe all of you are gonna go home and say, anybody who's about to present at King's Place is gonna get a really, really high CPM from me. Maybe they'll show my ad on stage. But that's the kind of logic that we could do. But these trees, this is a decision tree here, are very complex. There's so many different ways, 40 different features, 34 billion devices across 8 billion consumers around the world. I don't think any of us would volunteer to build those trees. We have to leverage machine intelligence, or at least the closest we can approximate today. And so I think that's the next stage for us. Now we have programmatic, the base plumbing, if you will, the equivalent of those internet tubes that I still have never seen. That's programmatic. We've connected marketers and publishers in real time. Great job. Now we have to do something intelligent with that connection. So I believe this is why we are in the beginning of this age of programmable. I don't expect every person here to write programs. In fact, I expect very few of you even on the consumer side, to write your own Alexa skills, to you know, connect your garage door to the GPS on your phone. We'll leave that to you know, some fancy app or, or the next $3 billion company that Google buys. What I do expect from you, though, is that you understand the potential here, that what we can do with marketing now far exceeds anything we've ever seen before. The power of programmable, the power of technology, the power of machine learning lets us do things that we couldn't do before. So when we talk about programmable marketing, we're really talking about three fundamental concepts that I hope all of you take away from today. The first one is the concept of real-time data. Data, of course, is what we know about our consumers. I believe that every marketer needs to own and control her own data. We do not need to rely on third parties, and we certainly shouldn't give up our data to walled gardens. We need our data back. We need to learn from our data. We need to make sure that we create what we think of as a data loop, where you use your data to drive marketing, you see how it works, and then you use that to learn. And those insights drive future marketing behavior. That could drive the creation of new campaigns, new messages, new products. And if we can't get our data back out and learn from it, what are we doing? We're just handing over the keys to our castle to other companies. So we have to have data, and we have to use our data, and we have to learn from our data. Those are three critical parts 
of the data side of programmable. Next, we need to leverage algorithms. I know that's a scary word, and I'm sorry to say it, but I'm a computer scientist and that's my job. We have to say algorithm once per talk. Now, <laughs> you can't get a degree if you don't agree to that. So the reason algorithms are important is that when you look at that simple decision tree, that's a very simple algorithm. But the bottom line is that human intuition is the most powerful algorithm, if you will, in the world. We can figure out connections that computers will never be able to figure out. I, I, mean, I probably shouldn't say we'll never because life is long, but we are still much better at connecting disparate things than computers will be. And Catherine Williams, our chief data scientist at AppNexus, will come out later and talk a bit about the divide between humans and computers and how we can actually leverage algorithms. So I won't speak too much about it, but I do want you to think about this question. Where are humans uniquely capable of creating value in this ecosystem? Building creatives, thinking of, of creative messages, inventing products, categorizing things. We're very good at that, we humans. Understanding how different kinds of people are likely to respond. I'm not asking for people to leave marketing. What I am asking is that we leave the optimization, the, the granular hyper-optimization to computers, because they're very, very good at these big, complex problem sets. And if we use our data, leverage our intuition, and plug that into machines, we can get outcomes that are extraordinary. And the final thing is, we really have to be part of an ecosystem. AppNexus is a platform company. We're a technology company. And I believe that just like Amazon is the gateway, so is AppNexus. We're just the gateway that connects all of you, all of your clients, back to this programmatic ecosystem. So we need partners who can enrich what we do, who can leverage our technology platform to create algorithms, to plug in data, to explain this to clients, to hopefully take this much broader and bigger than we could do on our own. It would make me very happy if in two or three years we had a thousand companies building algorithms on, on top of our platform in the same way that there are thousands of companies building skills on top of Alexa. And I don't think that's impossible to imagine. If you're a brand and you don't have your own algorithm, if you're not figuring out and controlling exactly how you interact with your consumers, kind of by default, that means somebody else is controlling how you interact with your consumers. I don't think that will fly. I think you have to take control. I think you have to understand how to leverage this technology. Or as Nigel said, your competitors will, and they will gain a huge advantage over you. So this is, whether we like it or not, the future. Whether we want to be in the programmable age or not, the bottom line is that we are. And if we don't jump into it with both feet, other people will. We need to advance marketing to a place where we can keep up with this consumer internet. I'm not suggesting that everyone here has an Alexa Echo. I do, and I program it, but that's, that's me. I am proposing, though, that more and more of the internet is becoming programmable. There was an IPO, finally, thank goodness, an IPO in tech, and it was a company called Twilio. Check out their S1. They're a programmable company. It says it, that's how they describe themselves. That's really interesting. The first tech IPO this year was a programmable platform. I don't think that's a coincidence. I didn't even make this up. This is real. These things are real examples. And so we have to be ready. Now, 10 years ago, when I started talking about programmatic and about real-time bidding, many of you responded in the same way you're responding now, which is, you know, boredom, concern, you know, all these emotions you're feeling, you know? And now today, we're seeing that 90% of marketers in the UK are leveraging programmatic. Well, in 10 years, I bet you that 90% of marketers are doing something with this concept of programmable. They'll have to. And this does mean that marketers, all of us, will have to learn new skills. It's not just Alexa skills. I mean actual skills, not just to program, but to leverage programmability to find partners that know how to take full advantage of this technology, to find people like me who will experiment and play with these ideas and figure out how they can be relevant to our brands. And I believe that's what's so exciting about this week 
for AppNexus, this week for all of us, is that we can begin this conversation. What will marketing look like in a programmable world? What will the internet look like in five or 10 years with all of these devices all around the world? And how will we take full advantage of it? I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited for what we are going to present today, which is a bunch of different perspectives on what the programmable age means. I hope all of you are as excited as I am to jump into it and take full advantage. Thank you.